And now to a Kelly File exclusive. An openly gay Republican running in a highly contested and very closely watched congressional race in California is the victim of a vicious attack just six days before the primary. Carl DeMaio is considered to be a frontrunner for the 52nd District, which includes San Diego. But yesterday morning, when his staff showed up at his campaign headquarters, they found the place had been vandalized. Computer screens shattered, laptops intentionally flooded with water, and every single cord in the office was cut, shutting down their communications. Police say that kind of damage suggests this was no random act of violence. And this is not the first time Mr. DeMaio has been targeted. Carl DeMaio is here with me now for a Kelly File exclusive. Carl, good of you to be here tonight. And so I, I want to ask you, because you have been targeted repeatedly, specifically by the left, and that's been very well documented. Do you believe that those who have targeted you in the past are capable of this? Well, I don't want to speculate on who's responsible for this. Uh, my hope is that the San Diego Police Department will pursue every lead and whoever uh, did this will be brought to justice. You know, at a time when people are, are out of work, uh, when veterans aren't getting benefits, um, this should not be the focus of our national dialogue on what we need to do in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, it ought to be on ideas, not vandalism in the middle of the night from some coward. It's crazy that, the, that this happened and the damage was bad. I mean, the police are the ones who came out and said, look, this was no random act. Um, I want to ask you why you're such a target. I mean, it seems that, that <laughs> the left in particular clearly perceives you as a threat. And as an openly gay Republican, do you believe it is because you potentially undermine their accusations that the GOP is a party that is exclusionary and bigoted. <laughs> I, I do believe that there are some on the far left who actually don't want to see these issues get resolved. Uh, they would rather have the Republican Party remain a boogeyman opposed to issues like marriage equality mm -hmm. uh, so that they have a fundraising tool uh, to uh, raise money off of. Uh, or to drive out Democrat voters. Like, how can and you be end, a gay Republican because the Republicans <laughs> hate gays? You know, uh, my hope is that my candidacy is uh, a precursor of what is to come, where the Republican Party returns to its roots in favor of personal freedom, uh, where we allow individuals to decide these issues, uh, and instead we focus our attention on fixing the financial okay. crisis in this country, getting people back but to work. But that's what I want to talk to you about as well, because the, the criticism yeah. of you, the, the targeting of you, didn't just come from the left. It's also come in, in part from the right, you know, the traditional right. marriage crowd in particular. You are a man who, this is part of your platform. You want audits performed for all on, uh, for, on all federal programs if you get elected. You want to review all regulations on private sector businesses. You want annual evaluations of public teachers. Oh, the horror. You want <laughs> to expand school choice. So you've hit on all yeah. of of the, the left's favorites. You would think that the right would be rallying behind you, and yet you've got some of the more social conservatives coming out and targeting you as well. Is there room for someone like you, who is clearly conservative economically and in terms of limited government policies, but, but seems more progressive on social issues, is there room for someone like you in the U.S. Congress in the grand old party? I think so. And I, on Tuesday's election, our primary is this Tuesday, just a few days away. I believe that San Diegans will agree that there is room and it will send a national message. Um, in this primary, I face two other Republicans that, as you noted, are backed by some far right groups. These far right groups have helped contribute up to seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars to oppose my candidacy in the Republican primary. And I'm hoping that on election night, on Tuesday night, it, there will, will be a national message sent that even Republican voters, primary voters, who are the most engaged, uh, they want to see the party modernized. They want to see a, a solutions-oriented party focused on the issues mm -hmm. that matter most to the American people, not these sideshows that really should be left up to individuals I, to decide in the context of personal freedom. I want to I want to end with some of the things that have been done with you because you know we've mentioned them, but that we haven't gone through them, and we're not going to get into all of them. But despite the fact that you have a 100% voting record when it comes to the LGBT community, despite the fact that you used your own partner in one of your campaign ads, which is very unusual for an openly gay uh, candidate to do, but you had but no it's problem not unusual, doing that. But it's not unusual for straight candidates. It's right, what not all unusual straight for straight candidates. candidates do. So you do this, right. you, you know, you, at, at risk of alienating those folks on the far right that we talked about, you do it. Right. Nonetheless, you got booed during a gay pride parade out there. We have some of that. Then they failed to defend you. The far left, the left failed to defend you when this fake group put up a drag queen parody, a photoshopped picture of you. 
Um, this, this is all a BS campaign trying to make you look like something you're not. These people were sanctioned in a court, and yet the left did not come out and even denounce this. When you hear some on the left claim the moral high ground on the issue of being inclusive, is it hard for you to stomach? And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not going to get angry about it. I'm going to focus on moving issues forward. I want these issues to be settled. Uh, we should be standing up for personal freedom and moving on. Uh, people should be treated with dignity and respect, equal protection under the law. And once we achieve that, then we can actually refocus our national discussion on fixing the economy, caring for our veterans, balancing the budget. You know, these are the issues that the American people yeah. care about. But both political parties seem to be distracted by political sideshows and i think i speak for millions of americans who are fed up and frustrated and they just want to see things get done well in defense of sort of the more, the more center and the regular left and the regular right as opposed to the fars uh... you know you're doing well and and the sort of the mainstream folks out there seem to have no problem with you nor do they condone any of these bad tactics carl good of you to be here thanks so much megan